Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Ant Will Plays. Today we are playing Nightbound from Choices. Sorry, sorry this took so long, and I know I'm on, and I know it's on a Thursday. And also, it took a while for me to get this thing started because it wouldn't load up. My phone wouldn't load onto the screen yet. So, uh, let's get started. When shimmering tensions finally bo boil over, a personal grudge will throw you you and those you care about into mortal peril. I think we need, I think I know where this is going. Chapter 13, The Jealous Boy. Yeah, we figured out who The Jealous Boy was. In the middle of, the, in the middle of a formal fay, ball, Held in your honor, your jealous half-brother, Tialo, has just brought down the protective wards that prevented the Fey colony from violence. Die, half-breed! Tialo lunges at you, brandishing a dagger. Tialo, don't! His face contorted with, man with manic fury, Tialo brings his weapon plunging down, its curved blade glinting in the gloom. Heart thundering, you jerk your body out of the path of the oncoming blade. The blow meant for your heart glances off your shoulder, instead scoring a bright line of pain down your upper arm. As you stumble back, clutching your wound, a hissing feathered blur suddenly shoots past you. What the? Cassie hits Tialo square in the face, latching on on with her tiny teeth and all four sets of claws. Get it off! Get it off! Yeah, Cassie, get him! Tialo grabs Cassie by the scruff and drags her off his face, her claws leaving angry red tracks That's in his shiny skin. Twisting wildly, Cassie breaks free of Tialo's grip and streaks away in the shadows. What in twelve hicks was that? Vengeance, Tialo. Tiny, angry vengeance. The ballroom lights flicker back to life. Gas and murmurs echo around the room. Tialo rounds on you again, teeth bared. I told you this would happen. If you did not leave, you brought this on yourself. Tell you don't have to do this. We can talk. We can... The time for talk is over. It's past, brother. This will be... This will all be over soon. If you... Have the decency to hold still. A growing hubbub swirls around you, punctuated by shrieks of s and sound and struggle. Tial lifts the dagger once again. Before Tial can lunge again, you launch yourself straight into him. Your momentum brings both of you down as you slide to the stop, tumbling over each other. You scramble for purchase. Take this, you backstabbing little... You bury your knee into Tialo's stone. He struggles beneath you, chest heaving, but you pin but you pin down both your his wrists. Let me up, you wretch! It's over, Tialo, and you lost. Gathin appears above you. She raises an admiring eyebrow at you. Hmm, good show, Anthony. I thought you could use some help, but I see you already have a vengeance brat well handed. You lurch to your feet, keeping your foot on Tialo's chest. I would have been here sooner, but this brat had henchmen scattered around the room. What? Just a handful of them. But in but 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 enough to occupy us. Nick's dispatching the last of them as we speak. Are you alright? I'm fine, but... As the commotion in the ballroom dies down, you you see Vera jostling her way over toward you, carrying a balled-up glove. Nick and Cal follow on her heels, and Nick grips your shoulder. I knew I didn't trust that stuck-up little... You're bleeding. It's just a scratch. Nothing to worry about. What about you? Did you... Did you... Uh, you trail off, looking questioningly at her bear's hand. Vera shakes her hand, her head. No, I thought I might have... 
Well, I have to. One of Shiala's goons was almost on me, but then Cal. I took him out so Vera wouldn't have to. A murmur threads through the azure faced Fay gathering around you, and they part to make way for Lord Elric and Talissa. About time they showed up. Lord Elric's face tightens as his gaze takes in on your wound and Tialo's prone form at your feet. Tialo, what have you done? Father, he sprang upon me when the lights went out. I, I think he meant to kill me. What? You lying rat. You came after me. Me, you deceitful piece of... Lord Elric lays a light hand on your shoulder, his face creased with pain. I know, Anthony. I heard enough of what passed between you. I know you tried to reason with him, but my selfish son could not bring himself to listen. I always knew that you were weak and vin vanal, Tiago, but to raise a hand to your own kin? Lord Eric draws himself up, up to, to his full height, Beside him, Lady Talissa surveys her son with a mixture of grief and abject disappointment. You are not only unfit to rule, but unfit to live among us. With all gathered here as witnesses, I abjure you, Tiago. I disavow you as my son and heir. Oh. Oh. Father, no, you, you can't. You put your own petty grievances these before the safety of your people. This bed is Sally of your of your making, Tialo, and now you will lie in, in it. Though it breaks my heart to do so, I banish you from Lem Lemrian. Where you go from here is yours to decide, but do not think to return here upon pain of death. Tialo's face crumples in devastation, devastation and disbelief. This is my home, father. Please. Lam Lamrian, Lamrian is no longer yours, and you are no longer my blood. Two guards come forth, dragging Tiala to his feet, and out of the barroom, Elric follows close behind, his face solemn. He spot Cassie perched atop an overturned table, her feathers bristle and her emerald eyes narrow to silts. Hey, it's all right. The jealous boy is gone now. We're safe. Cassie, Cassie slowly turns her head, meeting your eyes, and a terrible sense of foreboding steals over you. Not safe. Not anymore. It's coming. Death is coming. Oh, I know where this is going. As the yellow pleading, pleading shouts fade into the distance, you become aware of, of another sound. Just the screams and the sound of battle. The heck is that? I thought we took care of the kids' pawns. We did, with extreme prejudice. But he brought down the wards, which means there's nothing keeping the blood wraith out. As the words leave your mouth, the wall, the far wall explodes inward in a spray of stone and montar. And an eldritch shriek tears through the room. I'm going to try my best to do that. Ah, oh, great. Nick heaves the crossbow onto his shoulder. V Vera rips off her gloves. Catherine rolls, rolls both sigh into her hands, and Cal ships into to his brutal form. <laughs> it tears a merciless sweat through the terrified Fay gathered in its path, swatting them like aside like insects. Oh my God, it's going to kill everybody. The blood ray swivels its gaze across the room until its eyes lock on yours. The ability surges towards you, but Lady Talissa strides forward, flinging one hand, hand out in front of her. Be gone, hateful creature! Silver, silver back fire lances, fire lances from the tips of her fingers, splashing against the blood ray and setting up in a blaze. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> Heck, never thought I'd meet a caster strong enough to f use Fey Grimfire. 
You hold your breath as the blood ray flitches another barrage of silver flame, dry skin peeling away from its skeletal limbs, then surges forward, streaking its defiance. And all that did was piss it off. We just, we can't just stand here and let it mow everyone down. We have to do something. We are gonna do something. Get you the heck out of here. Soon as I spot a clear path, nothing we does, nothing we got doesn't, does any, anything good, does any good against that thing. If you try. The blood wraith suddenly charges forward, its eyes fixed on Lady Talissa. She redoubles her attack, but the pain only seems to drive the blood wraith into a frenzy. In a blink of an eye, it closes the gap between them, striking Lady Talissa with a backhand swipe that sends her flying across the ballroom. The blood ray turns to look at you again, a rictus, a rictus grin in it, on its face. Nick runs forward, firing desperately. Lovely dodges Nick's bolt as it closes on in on him, then swats him aside. Catherine hurls both sigh at its head, then rolls into a tumble, not fast enough. Catherine seizes as seizes as the blood wreath, its claws graze her back, opening swallow. It sees a shallow wounds that ting a poisonous black cow and Vera charge forward as one. Cow snarling and snapping, Vera reaching forward with one bare hand. The blood wave bats Cal aside amongst casually, but Vera manages to dodge inside, dodge inside its reach, her bare hand grabbing it by the arm. Vera snatches her hand away, cradling her smoking palm against her chest. The blood race hisses, is staring at the black blistered mark on mark Vera left behind on its pallid skin. I I hope that hurt you, Mangy. Vera rolls her. Vera's eyes roll back in her head, and she crumples to the floor unconscious. The creatures, the creatures' eyes lock on you. And a wave of icy terror swells inside you and roots your feet in place. So this is what it feels like. I'm really going to die. Initially, you look around the ballroom for anyone that can save you, but Talissa, Cal, Talissa, Catherine, Cal, and Vera all lie limply on the ground, scattered across the barn like discarded toys. Only Nick stirs, obviously fighting to stay conscious, dragging himself toward you with shaky arms. Rookie, if the... Just go. Run. But fear has rooted you to the spot, and you can only watch as the blood wraith closes in until it hovers over you, fangs purred, and gruesome triumph, claws race for the final blow. When suddenly you find yourself shoved roughly to the side, sending you sprawling. You will not have him, foul beast. Father, no. Howling with triumph, and the blurry punches one vicious clawed hand into Elric's chest. His flesh already turning gray as the blood wraith drains his life force. Elric reaches out and traces a portal with a shaking hand. Almost there. The portal materializes, revealing a slice, slice of churning blackness. With a shearing gas, Lord Elric pulls free from the blood wraith. And thrust it boldly through the portal, which snaps shut behind it. As the bullet vanishes, Lord Elric coughs once, shudders, and then collapses to the floor. Father, Snake, you scramble to his side, clutching one of his pale, bl bloodied hands to your chest. You're going to be okay. Hold on, Elric. Just, just hold on for me, okay? We're going to get you help. We're going. Eric laughs briefly, then dissolve, dissolves into a racking cough. You are so kind, my darling son. 
I'm afraid my time has come. I'm sorry. I am only sorry for not, for not having had time enough to love you as a father should. There was so much I wanted to tell you, to teach you. Forgive me, love, for leaving you like this way. Devastation yawns like a pit inside you, black and bottomless. Hot tears slip down your cheek, and you choke back a sob. Father, no. With an effort, he focuses on you, his anguished face easing into a slight warm smile. May the sun never warm your face, and, and the countless stars ever guard your sleep. I wish you could have known your home with me, ridden his, ridden his dragons through our skies, commanded our clouds. I wish we could have done that together, too. Perhaps you still will, and please, tell your mother that I loved her still, until my last breath. His face slackens and his head falls heavy against your thigh. Your eyes fill with tears as you stare down into, it, into his still features. No, I only just found you. It's not fair. Through the haze of grief, you see something sparkling beside Lord Elric's face. You wipe your tears, and you see a hovering luminous tear twinkling in the light. <sighs> might as well. I might skip it or not. As your fingers graze the, te graze the tears' warmth, slick surface, the carnage of the ballroom melts away around you. Okay. You know what? We're going to skip it. Just... You guys can read it if you want. So... Oh, it talks. Sign of the Earthbound. Why are we... Why does this feel like Game of Thrones... can't believe one of the dragons talks. All right, we're back. Uh, we got two more left. We got two more tears left. So 
well, something happens when you collect them, I don't know, leaving you back on the cold stones beside Elric's body. He was so powerful and so kind, and now I'll never share any of that with him. You slump over Elric's still, sh still form, your whole body shaking with painful sobs. What feels like hours later, a pair of a pair of warm hands alight your, on your shoulder. You look up to see Lady Talissa's tear-streaked face. Anthony, stay still. You're hurt. A soothing energy seems to radiate from her touch, see, seeking into your skin. All around you, around you see other fae tending to the wounded with their magic. Your wounds tingle as they start to close, but the ick ache in your heart remains. I'm so, so sorry. We brought that thing to your, into your door. We led it straight to him. If we just stayed away, he'd be, still be here. Latosa tugs you to your feet and draws you away from Elric's body, pulling you into a fierce warm hug. Never think that, Anthony. He only just found you. And to have the chance to guard your life as a loving father would, Eric would have, would not have had it any other way. As you pull away from her, nodding tremulously, Nick and Catherine reach your side with Cal and Vera on their heels. Anthony, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Nick. Could I? Is there something I could I can do for you? I, I really don't think so. Vera wraps herself around your arm and rests her head on your shoulder. Cal puts a steady hand on your back. Is that, is that thing gone? At least, was all of this, was all this worth it? At least a little. I'm afraid not even the void between worlds can keep a blood wraith from its full prey. It will be prone to boundary of our world. Until it finds a weak point, then tear, then tear its way through. You mean we're still not rid of it? And if it resurfaces before the wards have been restained, I can offer you precious little protection. How long will it take to get him up and running again? A week, at the very least. Nope. There's no way you can wait a week. And there's no guarantee it'll stay gone for that long. That means we gotta clear out now. Lady Lissa nods, then turns to give you a long, grief-struck look. I have my people to tend to, and you need to keep need to, to keep safe. But when all this is over, please return to us. We are still your family, and Lemrian and Lemrian is your, your home. I I would love that. Thank you, Lady Lissa, for everything. You wrap her in one last hug, your heart leaded with loss. The four of you trudge through the... Wait, four? The five of you... Don't you mean five? That includes me. Trudge through the rapid barber and backs bowed, picking your way over lifeless bodies toward the front door. Later, you recover at the graveyard shift. Everyone changes out of their formal wear, and you catch... Whereas Crom and Ivy up on the night's e events. That's just... Jeez, Anthony. I don't know what to say. We're just so sorry. Gareth looks up at you, his eyes bleeding and bloodshot from tears. I'm afraid we're notable. Hey, we're notable lacking in cheer tonight. My mortals and, and Anthony. Though we didn't always see eye to eye, Eric was my duke, and the kindest noble I've ever had. The privilege is of never swindling, but my grief is nothing next to yours. How are you faring? Honestly, I'm devastated. I feel like I want to throw up. I f just, I don't know. I don't, I know I barely knew him, but it doesn't feel that way. It feels like like, like I've been searching for my whole life, and now he's just gone. Cassie jumps up to the bar and trots over to you. 
She rears up on her hind legs and rubs her soft feathered face against your cheek. Thanks, Cassie. Next to you, Nick rests a warm hand on your shoulder, squeezing tight. I know what, what, I know what that's like, Rook. Been there too many times. Sometimes it feels like, like being buried under a mountain. All that rock bearing down on you, like the darkness won't ever lift. But it will, Anthony. You're in a tunnel, not a cave, and we'll get you to the other side. It just feels, it just all feels so hopeless. And I'm his son, and I'm his, his son. It feels like I should be doing something. We've been granted a brief reprieve while a blood race off the board. We should take this time to time to plan. Since we can't rely on the Fey for assistance, maybe I could p petition the Pact for their help. Bringing the blood rate down is a matter of pride for them. Is it true, but they're not exactly our biggest fans right now, remember? Maybe if you hadn't gassed the whole compound, they'd be a bit more open to discussion. Dude, is there anyone in this town you guys haven't pissed off? Hmm. You know what? No. I don't know. I suggest going to the vampires. There's, but they're not really team players. Last night, one of them almost hit me for asking, asking him to scoot his chair over. Very rude. He won't eat, be returning. Is there any chance chance Lady Smokewood would? No. No, don't even ask me that. Well, if you've got any better ideas, lay them on me. Otherwise, as the argument grows more heated, the bar seems to shrink and tighten around you, making it hard to breathe. You stand abruptly, nearly overturning your chair. I, I need some air. Sorry. You rush to the door at the back of the bar and pound up the creaky stairs to the roof deck. Alone on the roof, you lean over the rail. Letting the night breeze cooling your face below. The city teems with revelry music. How can the world just go on like that? As if everything's the same. The door creaks open, and be open behind you, and you turn to see Vera stepping out onto the roof deck. She gives you a tentative smile. You seem pretty upset back there. Just wanted to make sure you were okay. Then out a sad, bitter laugh, watching woolly clouds gathering on the dark horizon. I'm a lot of things right now, but okay is definitely not on the list. I just feel so lost. I guess I just just a few days ago I was running around living my normal boring life. Then boom, monsters, moral moral peril, necromancy. And just when I thought I'd found my place in this crazy world, that gets ripped away too. I think I know how you feel, at least a little. There are times when I wonder if I'll, I'll ever find a place where I belong. If you want to talk about how you feel, I'm here for that, Anthony. I'm here for you. Talk with Vera to ease your troubles and to get closer to her. Okay. You know what's weird? Does she have any other clothes? I mean, I'm not trying to be rude, but... You know, I'd really love that. Vera settles next, next to you, resting in her, arm, her, for, her slim forearms on the railing. Somewhere close by, you, you hear the sound of breaking glass. Funny, you wouldn't think a city this loud could feel as lonely as it does. It can be deceptive, the relentless party, when you're not a part of it. You just feel so other. Vera, do you really feel that way too? Vera laughs, laying, running a hand over her curls. Oh my god, only all the time. I mean, daughter of a mob boss, victim of an ancestral curse? It'll be kind of worrying if I did feel like a normal girl. 
Okay, I guess that makes some sense. I totally get the having powers. Powers. It's supposedly to be a be this gift, but no one ever asked, really asked about the burden that comes with it. Well, they do. Well, they kind of do with great power and all and so on. Problem is, what if there is no one to teach you about how to handle that responsibility? Power, responsibility, Spider-Man reference, can we, can we let it slide? Or even worse, what if there is, and they're the last person in the world who should be doing it? You think about, you think of the memory you've witnessed of Lady Smoke forcing Vera to kill a rival mobster with her touch and suppress her shudder. But you, you had that person, someone kind and wonderful, who could show you how to cult cultivate your powers, and then he, then he was snatched away, and now I'm pretty sure I can't even use them. Really? Yeah. Watch. You hold out your hands in front of you, just like Elric taught you. The air shimmers, sweat beams your forehead, but nothing happens. See. When I f when we first entered Lem Lemrian. I felt this tingle in the back of my mind, not just some sentimental thing, but magic, real magic. And then in the Fey realm, I used it just for a second, but it hap but it happened. It was it was me. I did that with Elric's help, but that tingle has been gone since the moment Elric died. Oh, Anthony, I'm sorry. Do you still want to learn? Do you think from someone else? Absolutely. I want to use my powers to help people, but also, it just felt so amazing, so right. I can't wait to test my limits, push myself to finding, find out all the things I can do. Fame magic is beyond beautiful, Anthony. I'm sure Garz can teach you more about it. It's just, I'll always wish Elric were the one to teach me. Of course, he was your dad and the most powerful person. How could it not be so, be so hard to lose it all? What about you? You fought off zombies with your touch, saved my life more than once. Would you still get rid of the curse if you could? Vera rests her chin on her, her chin on, and in her, rests her chin in her hands and looks out over the night cloak's chair. Used to be there was only one answer to that. I always thought of the curse of Des Death. And that's just not me, you know? I like music and sunshine and puppies. I like happy I know it sounds silly, but that's what I want my life to be about. Happiness like That's not silly at all. You have the right to determine to determine your life make it anything you want but it's just not that clear cut anymore how can I give up something that allows me to protect the people I love I mean is that the life I want knowing I could help but being too squeamish to do it you're not a coward for wanting to take care of yourself it's not fair to ask you to sacrifice your own happiness for the sake of others, other people. Honestly, I'd being honestly, I'd settle for being able to touch someone just once, just feel their skin under my hands without fear. Now that would be a gift. You turn to face Vera, who's watching you with solemn eyes. And if you did get to, to touch someone, who would it be? Vera casts her gaze down, drawing her lip through her teeth, then gives you an open and infinitely fin tender look. You know it'd be you, Anthony. You reach out and take Vera's hands in yours, running your thumbs over her gloved knuckles. 
She stiffens a little, then relaxes, and you bring her palms up to your face, cupping them around your cheeks. I'm right here, Vera. I can feel your hands, how warm you are. I can, I can feel that too. The heat of your skin. What's a little sip between you and me? You slip your arms around Vera's waist and close the distance between you, pressing your lips to hers. Her mouth is soft, yielding under yours, and you lose yourself in the warmth of her breath. I mean, really, who even needs hands? Vera laughs slightly. Okay, that's poor choice of words. Against your lips, then gasps a little as the kiss heats and deepens. Pull her closer, tangling your fingers in front of her, curls stroking the nape of her neck. You're like sunshine, you know, but you're war so warm and sweet. Funny, I was just thinking almost the exact same thing about you. Meant to be, I guess. You hold off, you hold Vera for a long moment listening to the light, steady beat of her heart against your chest. So, think you ready to head back downstairs? After that, I feel like I'm ready for anything. Your heart just, your heart just a little lighter, take Vera's hand and lead her down the stairs. Where the mood has shifted to a quiet tension. You okay, Anthony? You were gone a minute. We were getting worried. What, with all the arguing? Just needed to catch my breath, that's all. I'm coming to... I'm coming to know the feeling. Yeah, me too. He blows... He blows air through his lips and rubs his face with both hands. We're really hitting a wall down here. Coming up hard against the fact that this blood fish just won't die. It'll just keep killing and killing, and we can't do it. Can't do it. We can't do anything to stop. Stop it. Well then, dear mortals, perhaps it is time to change tactics. The wraith is of yours may be invulnerable, but the man who controls it is not. Isn't he? I mean, he was brought back from the dead, right? He certainly looked like a standard issue revenant, abnormally strong. Perhaps not unkillable. But what would happen to the blood wraith? Even if we kill Thomas, as it seems dangerous to leave a monster like that running free. Blood wraiths have a have one master. It's built right in the spell that summons them. Ownership is non transferable. Blood wraiths don't really have a will of their own. Kill the blood wraith's master? And it's basically an empty husk. Thomas isn't exactly going to come banging on our door until he's good and ready. How would we even find him? If you're lucky, I happen to have just the spell to solve that problem. Oh great. How many gallons of spirit essence is that going to cost us? We don't exactly have a bunch of free time to spend sulking in cemeteries. Relax, buds. I think you've earned yourselves a freebie. Believe it or not, I actually prefer you all alive, all na naive. Ivy opens her skull patterned tone bag and begins rummaging around. Now let's see, where did I put that? Oh, aha! She pulls out a little compact mirror and flips it open, revealing a, glow a glowing blue light. What is that? 400 year old screening spell, Oculus Meridiana. Nearly had had to sell to sell the reminder of my soul to get my hands on it. Ivy, kidding. Mostly now to work my now to work the spell. We just need someone who knows the summoner's face. Oh, I'm not likely to forget that anytime soon. Ivy hands over the compact. Just look into this, to the light and call up an image of him in your mind. The spell should do the rest. 
You stare into the light, focusing on your memory of the of Thomas's face. The globe pulses softly. He then vanishes. In its place forms a crystalline image of Thomas. The blood rate just hides in his hands. Him. The image pulls back, revealing a hulking warehouse. Thomas starts glances on both shoulders and disappears into the darkness inside. Hey, I know where that is. It's one of the parade warehouses for retired floats. When was this image seen, Ivy? We gotta know how much shirtway that he has on us. Are you taking are you talking to a pro or what? Nick, this is a real time. This is real time. It's happening now. Change up preemptive gauges and everyone else. Everyone else, your pulse picking up. Nick slides off his stool, adjusting his crossbow. His eyes blazing with grim anticipation. Well then, let's go kill him. Will you bring Thomas and his blood rate down or die trying? Keep playing to find out. Wow. Okay. That was a sad moment. Elric's death. And now I skip through the um, tear story. We're calling it tear stories because every time we see a tear and we have to pick it up, I think it's if we collect them all, I think we get something else. I don't know what it is, but I I I think I think we'll figure it out. Anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. If you want to get notified of all the videos I put up on my channel. Go hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video.